Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel, comment, like, and put the notification button on. So today we are going to look at net present value, which is well known as NPV in accounting. This is actually a, a term used in capital budgeting. So today we are going to look at how to calculate NPV, um, the non-constant cash flow using a table. So when you're actually given non-constant cash flow is when you're given different cash flows um, in different years. And you also have a method, I mean, we have constant cash flows where you are given the same cash flows throughout the years, or you can be given different cash flows all of the years. So today we are going to look at non-constant cash flows. Right, so before we get into it, let's define NPV. The net present value is the method you use to determine the current value of all future cash flows generated by the project, including the initial capital investment. What we mean is uh, we use uh, NPV method to actually determine the current value of all the projected cash flows in the future. So we are saying that $100 in 2025 is actually worth less than $100 today. So that's why we want to find the value, we want to discount the um, cash that you are going to get in the future. So now we have to get to use the net present value method or the NPV method. This actually allows us to determine whether it's worth investing in a certain project and so on. Well, so the decision rule. So we are saying that if the NPV is greater than zero or it's more than zero, that is now if you have calculated your um, NPV and you get zero, I mean, and you get above zero, when you are, we are actually saying that your NPV is positive. So we say that you can accept the project. It says that you can accept the, the project if your NPV is above or it's greater than zero, which means it's positive. Now, if the NPV is less than zero, which is negative, then you should reject the project because that project will not worth it. So you have to reject it. You are, you are going to make a loss. Then um, if your NPV is equal to zero, we are saying that you can accept or reject. You're actually indifferent about this. You can either accept or reject the project. Right, now let's look at the question. This is one of the questions that actually took from um, Southern Business School question paper for the previous question papers. So it's question three. They says, um, you are the accountant of Isolunku Pty Ltd. The operating director wants to tender for a new mining contract of five years. A new excavator machine is needed for the tender. However, the director has little insight into the company's financial situation and ask you to evaluate whether they should tender for the contract or not. Now, you are provided with some additional information. We say the initial cost of the excavator in 2020 is 600,000, I mean 650,000, right? And the company's weighted average cost of capital is 12%. And in most cases, they just say the cost of capital or the um, rate of return. Yeah, the rate of return is 12. So it's the same, the, the um, weighted average cost of capital or just the cost of capital or the rate of return is the same thing. So we, in this question, they says it's 12%. Now, Required, use the net present value method and the following cash inflows to advise the director whether the company should tender for the contract or not. Now you actually provided with a yes as well as the cash flows. Now remember I said that we are using, uh, we are going to deal with non-constant cash flow. That's why you are seeing here we have different numbers of cash flow. This is what I meant by different cash flows in every year. So you can see um, we are given 2021, we are given 2022, 2023, we are given 2024 and 2025. This is actually five years. Now you have to calculate or you have, yes, you have to um, use 
your net present value method to determine whether it's worth investing in this uh, project or tendering for this contract or not. Now let's, uh, what you have to do first is uh, to draw your table. So your table should have yes, and it not necessarily needed, but just to actually make it easier for you to calculate. Then you should have your cash flows. These are now the numbers that you're going to get, that you're getting from the table that is provided. Then you have the present value of an uh, interest factors. This is actually the, uh, percentage that you are given. And this one, you're going to take them from the table. As I say, the present very interest factor, the, um, the, 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 the amount of the percentages we use to discount um, our cash flows against the years, right? Then you have the present value of every cash flow. Now you are getting to, you, if you discount those cash flows, you get the present value of those cash flows. Now let's get into it. So we have um, year zero, we have year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, right? And remember I said from our, uh, from our definition, we also say that we include our initial. So, and in this case, our initial is 600, um, 650,000, the one that is provided in the equation. And remember that is the um, our year zero, that is the current or the present year. In I mean, and you don't actually have to discount it because the, it's the present year. Remember you are looking for the present value. That means that it's a present value, it's the same amount, right? Okay, now, and we have year one, we are just going to take the amount from the table that we have provided uh, previously and just place them in here, right? Now that you have all our, um, our cash flows presented in the table, show you guys how we get our amount for the present value um, interest factor. So what you do is you look at the percentage that you are provided with, right? And um, looking at the percentage that you are provided with, and you also just look at the number that the number of years. If you look here, it says N and the rate. So the rate is in this row and the um and the numbers of numbers of the N or the numbers of years are going down. So now we have um we are provided with 12%, so we are going to go to 12%. And you look at all the interest factors that are provided corresponding to the year. So if you are in year zero, which is in our case, this was um, 2000, right? This is 2020, we have 2001, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, as we are provided from our table. So now um, year zero, you just come down here, then you get one, right? Then um, year one, again, you just move from year one, coming coming down to year, I mean, to your 12%, then you have 0 0.893. So then you just do for the, um, the same, for the rest of the years, right? Now we have our complete present um, value interest factor. Now the easy part guys, all you have to do to get your present value of each cash flow, you just multiply the cash flow by the present value interest factor, the amount that you got. So we are just going to make 650,000 multiplied by one which actually give us the same amount. And remember we are making it a negative because we want to, um, we are actually deducting the amount that we have invested so that we know whether this project is worth it. It's like um, to, to identify whether we are going to make a profit or not. Because if you include this amount, then it does not really give you the exact amount of the profit that you're supposed to be. So you, if you have spent something, you have to deduct it in order to identify whether you're making a profit or not. That's why we are going to minus our initial amount, our, the money that we have invested in, right? Okay, um, then uh, we are going to take 420,000 multiply with 0 0.893, then we'll get 375,060 
parents. And you actually just do the same for the rest of the years, right? So you're just going to do the same for the rest of the years. Now, once you have actually, um, once you have reached the uh, last year to calculate NPV, then you're just going to add all those present values. And remember the first one, it's a negative. So make sure that you, you include it as a negative because you have to minus or alternatively you can just add this together in minus the 650,000 so you can get your NPV. So if we add all this together and you minus the 650,000, you are going to get 1,226,470 dollars. Right, so that is our NPV. And you can clearly see that it's a, a positive NPV. Right, so in uh, our conclusion, then we are going to say that our NPV is obviously positive. So it's saying that the company should tender the contract because the NPV is positive, right? So that, that is how we calculate our NPV uh, using the table when the cash flows are, are non-constant non or they are not the same. I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, like, uh, comment. And remember, if you have subscribed to my channel and you have a question, you can actually contact me. You can send me your question. I can look at it and I can make a video answering your question regarding accounting, economics, marketing, business, all those courses, guys. See you guys in our next video.